Never. I know we're going to have questions afterwards, so you know, think about if you have any questions for me, but also we can have discussion all the way through. So, um, as you've heard, I'm an artist. I haven't always been an artist, but um, I was telling someone earlier that I was a prison guard, and I started that because I became a single mother after my husband took off. I was 27, had a high school diploma and no work history, but um, I went on and s signed up for my first college class. And a week later, my dad died. Two months later, my mom died. And I just kept going to that one class and being a prison guard during the day. And it took me about three years to get an associate's, four years. And then I went to Spring Arbor. And then with that degree, um, I kept promoting up and out of the prison until I became a felony probation parole officer. So I worked for 25 years for the Department of Corrections. But about the last a five or six, I took up painting. And I would do it kind of just as relaxation and that. But when somebody asked to purchase one, that was kind of a good feeling. So I started painting more and then a couple more sales and that. But it wasn't until the last, um, maybe six years that I got really serious about it as an artist. But how many of you have heard about um, if you follow your passion, the money will come? Have you heard that phrase? Well, first of all, it's a lie. <laughs> it's just an out and out, well, I wouldn't say lie, but it's a mistake. Because I know lots, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens if hundreds of artists who will never become successful. They're very passionate about what they do. Their artwork is incredible. They are way more talented than I am. But they haven't owned it and they haven't turned it into a business. And selling a piece of art is just like selling a widget or any other product. You have to identify who your market is appeal to them, and the marketing, marketing, marketing is all about them, not me, not my art. And if you've ever been to, a, um, let's say, a, a gallery opening or an artist opening, and the artist sits there and tells you about, well, I started taking art classes then, and I used this pure acrylic by Golden that does it this, but I'm inspired by me. I don't care. I just don't care. My eyes just blur over and it's like, what's in it for me? Tell me about why I should have this piece of art in my home. Appeal to what is for me. So these other artists that I know, they have passion, but there's three things they're missing. One is a commitment. Honestly, they're doing it half, you know, <laughs> all the time. They're doing it like I was when I was painting in the basement. If somebody wanted a painting, okay, you can have it, yay! But they didn't take it to the next step of being committed to it. And when they got discouraged, they didn't have perseverance. Now when you go out into the world after your education here, you're gonna have to have commitment to your next career. You're going to have to have perseverance. You won't get your dream job the first interview you have. And that's how artists work. They get discouraged so then they don't persevere. But the biggest thing they don't do is take action. You all have a goal. And if we asked each of you to write down your goal, you've also been told you can't achieve your goals until you identify them, write them down, you don't know, believe it, you will achieve it. That's not true either. You can write down all the goals you want, and it doesn't mean you're going to get them. You've got to take action. And that's where the other artists, they still struggle. 
they go, oh, I've written down my goals, and I've tried this, and I've done that, and I've done what you did. I, I got a Facebook account, and an Instagram account, and a LinkedIn account, and a Pinterest, and this and that. And but I haven't gone to any shows because I don't have the money, and I don't have, and I'm not posting on Instagram. I'm not building my, my tribe or my ideal audience. And again, it goes back to then they're discouraged, so then it goes back to then they have no commitment. And then they cry about why can't I be successful? And that is about being an entrepreneur in everything. And even if you go and work a traditional job, which I advise because I had that traditional paycheck, being a parole and probation officer, which afforded me the luxury that I didn't have to sell a painting to put food on my table. My heat was paid, mortgage paid, phone bill paid, because I had a day job. I had insurance, and I was one of the lucky ones. I have a pension. So get your day job, but don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on thinking that I can either make a difference and in some ways, even as being like a life coach or working with youth, you can still turn that into a business and get some income. Or you want to be a writer or a photographer or a musician. If that is what stirs your heart, go for it. But don't think it's an all or nothing. Either I'm going to work for the Department of Corrections or I'm going to be an artist. The world is big of possibilities. So don't limit yourself on what your life can look like. Being an entrepreneur and being an artist, I call myself an entrepreneur. I'm an artist, but I understand that I'm an entrepreneur. And I work as hard at being an entrepreneur as I do being an artist. Now most people think that artists just sit in their studios and paint and paint and how wonderful this is. And, it's all fairy dust and all that. But the reality is, is that once I finish a painting, I have to put more time in and more work into the business side of it. I first have to photograph my work. And it has to be high resolution, like 55 megapixels, which before I was taking shots with my you know, Canon Sure Shot. But now the companies I'm working with are requiring high definition. So I had to go out and buy, which I did on e, uh, eBay, a, a used Canon high resolution camera. Then I had to figure out how to work it, take the shots accurately, crop them, do all the editing, and then I have to upload it to my website, upload it to um, another company who is selling uh, prints of my work, upload to another company who is selling originals of my work, and then I post it on Facebook and Instagram and um, LinkedIn. I also write a blog. I write two blogs, one about being the, um, the business of creativity, how it is a business, and then the other one is a personal on my art site so people can get to know me better because the connection between you and your customers means more than what your bottom line is or what your, um, your financials are. They don't care. It's like that blank look over their faces. They don't care what's in it for me. They want to make a connection with you. And so I do a couple of high-end art shows. One of them is coming up um, in Chicago. It's called the One of a Kind. It's a four-day event. And Thousands and thousands of people come. Now, I don't sell to thousands and thousands, but I don't worry about it. Because the people who want my kind of art will find me. I don't beg them to buy, but I make a connection. As soon as they're in the booth, I start a conversation. And it's about them, not about me, not about my art. I do tell them, if you have any questions about my art, you know, please ask, you know. But I talk about where they're from and what are they enjoying about the show and all those things. And then I also have like a, a bowl um, 
where they put their name and email in and they can win a painting. So now I'm building my mailing list. So then I um, can keep in touch with them and tell them where my next show is. One year, I took a paintbrush and I put a Salvador Dali mustache on it. And I asked anyone to come in my booth if they would hold it up and I'd take their photo. And they all did. They thought it was hilarious. And then I made a video of it to the song Hello Dolly. <laughs> and gave them slips of paper to my website to come see the video afterwards. And it wasn't to ask them to buy art. It was about making a connection. So again, when you are building a business, and entrepreneurship is huge right now, and I'll side note this a little bit. My father was a very down-to-earth, you know, salt-of-the-earth kind of guy. He was a tank commander in the Korean War and had a Purple Heart and came home with all these, rescued a general from being taken prisoner. He um, eventually became a captain, but he worked here in Jackson as an engineer. And he worked his whole life trying to put a little money away while he supported his family and doing the American dream, you know, having enough money saved so when the washer broke, he could go get one and that. Well, when the manufacturing business changed, they were downsized and he was let go at 55. It wiped him out emotionally. He was 55, he's downsized, and where does he go now? He died at 59 of a heart attack. But the point is, is that the jobs that he had, the pension and the gold watch, they're gone. You might get lucky to get in with a company who offers those things. But entrepreneurship and creative thinking and what you do outside of the nine to five can be your ticket to building your life in the wherever. You do it in your free time. And again, back to those artists. While they're sitting home, texting their friends and watching, you know, who wants to be a millionaire or the Real Housewives or whatever else, I'm sitting with my laptop open writing a blog post. I'm responding to people who have sent me an email about my work. If they buy a piece of work, I write a handwritten note in it and mail it to them. So they know I appreciate, and it's a personal touch. It isn't sending an email with a, you know, thank you so much for your business. It's a handwritten note. So again, I've got commitment. I've got commitment to what I'm doing. I have persevered even when I wanted to give up or got discouraged. But most of all, I've taken action. And action is the most important point of your dream, of your goal. Because if you don't take action, it's just a wish. Oh, I wish I would do this. Another way of putting it is get off your butt. <laughs> because anybody who says, but, everything they said prior to that word was a lie. I would like to become an artist, but, no they don't. I would like to continue my education, but, no you don't. I would like to, but, no you don't. Because you're already thinking of the ways you don't have to do that. You can, you can settle for mediocrity. Like the person who's trying to diet and they want to lose 25 pounds and they lose seven and they go, well, I gave my best shot. You know, that's okay. They didn't have the commitment, they didn't have the perseverance and they didn't take the action. The students in college who say, oh, darn, I'd like to bring my chemistry grade up to an A. They get a C and they go, well, you know what, that's good enough. See, it's passing, but you didn't commit, you didn't persevere, and you didn't take action. And they go, well, you know, it's college, you know, 
it's also about being social, so I went out with my friends every night, or I did this or that. Well, then you take the responsibility for where you are. So I guess because this is supposed to be a short speech about entrepreneurship, there's more on each one of those elements I'd like to talk about, but I just want to give you some insight as to why being creative, being an artist, is being an entrepreneur. Why being a writer or being a musician or being, it's hard to stand out in a world of the internet where ev you're vying for everybody's attention. I'm going to tell you one last story is, I don't try to appeal to everybody. I don't even try. I try to be true to myself, create what is part of my soul, and then put it out there. Put it out to the world and let them find me. <laughs> Two things. Once last summer was my first year, I was invited by the director of the Ann Arbor University um, Art Fair. She said, have you ever done the show? And I said, no, nah, it's just too big. It's just a headache. And it's this, she goes, I'd like you to reconsider. Please try it. So my first year, a reporter comes up to me from the Detroit Free Press. In fact, he called me at home. I hadn't even gotten to the show yet. And he said, I understand it's your first year. Are you afraid people won't be able to find you in such a large art fair? And I said, well, you know what? They'll find me if they are looking for my kind of art. If they want a coffee mug, they'll find a coffee mug. So I'm not going to concern myself. Well, they did find me, and I had a very successful show. So I don't try to appeal to the masses. So now, and as I said, I let them find me. And I was just telling Ron a minute ago, well, I'll tell you a couple of things that went with before that. Um, a few months ago, I get an email from an art licensing company <coughs> called iCanvas. They're big. And they asked if they could license my artwork. What that means is that I upload a photo, a high-resolution photo, they sell prints, and I get a residual of royalty every time they do. So I sit home and get a check. <laughs> they contacted me. An online gallery is one of the biggest ones. You probably haven't heard of it because um, you're not in the arts. It's called U Gallery. They list my work. I keep my original paintings at home. They send me an email. This piece just sold. They send me a huge shipping box padded already and a pretty la uh, shipping label. And all I have to do is put my artwork in it and take it to pack and ship. Again, they send me a check. Artful Home is another one. They send me a check. But I still write that handwritten note to say thank you. And I collect their addresses so I can tell them where I'll be or what's going on. And then recently, and this is what I was telling Ron, I got a phone call three nights ago. I didn't recognize the area code, so I didn't answer because you know, we're all getting those spam calls now on your cell phones. But there was a message, and it was from a gentleman who had just part, made a partnership, a collaboration with a national store called Crate and Barrel. <coughs> have you heard of it? And they have selected 12 artists out of the nation that they want to start selling original art in their stores. And I was one. Again, I didn't do it. They came to me because I built my brand. I didn't try to appeal to everybody. I knew who I was. I create what I'm doing. And then I let people find me. So when I call it marketing, it's really about sharing and talking about them and the benefit to them, not to me. Oh, buy my work and buy my work, and I haven't eaten in a month. And this and that, oh, I guess you could have it for 50 bucks if you buy it today. No, I'm not desperate. You should never be desperate when you're going for your dream. Know who you are. Set your goals. 
commit to them, persevere, and then take action. Now, can um, you kill the lights back there? Is there a switch? Oh, shoot. My computer turned off. I think it's there, John. I don't think it's off. Uh, this is back here. I don't know where this is. Where the is there a light switch anywhere? Let me try this. I think you can still see the name. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay. That's good. As long as I just wanted to be more dramatic. close by saying run towards your dream commit to it persevere through it and take action because you'll be blown away what that's going to add to your life and you guys have incredible incredible futures ahead of you create the life you dream of thank you for letting me be here today Thank you so much, Jane, for sharing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. so if you guys want to ask any questions, if you have to get out of here to get to class, we understand as well. Um, but please stick around and ask some questions, as many as you want. So thank you again. Any questions or off to class? <laughs> what motivates you to keep working through like the drudge work of having to do those blog posts and having to do that look, marketing? Because I understand that that's the other side of being an artist, that it isn't all fun. And that's just the, you know, it's like doing your bookkeeping when you're, uh, you know, in another big kind of business. That's just part of a business. So I just understand that. Anybody else? Okay. Um, so you talked a lot about perseverance and pushing through. Um, I know, like, as an aspiring entrepreneur, a lot of entrepreneurs um, fear failure and uh, the risk of failure. Um, could you talk a little bit about, like, maybe some personal experiences of being able to persevere through failure? I sure can. Because being an artist is also about having lots and lots of rejection. Because you submit your work, and, that, and to an artist, it feels like you're putting a piece of your soul out there. And then they go, no thanks. We don't need you. No thanks. And you try again. 
But that failure, it hurts for a minute. But then again, I just kind of try to brush it off and say, well, you know what? Maybe my work doesn't fit with their organization. Or maybe I just need to get better at something else. It's like working out. You know, you got to flex that muscle enough to be strong at it. And that's kind of what failure does to you is like, okay, I fell down, but I'm going to keep getting up and I'm going to keep running. So you're all inspired. You're all going to become entrepreneurs. You're going to follow your dreams. Okay, cool. Well, enjoy your day, guys.